Once again, good morning and welcome to our Stat and Prob class. This morning, we'll have Lesson 1.2, and it is about the probability distribution of a discrete random variable. Our memory verse is found in Luke 1, verse 37. It says, for nothing will be impossible with God. If I'm going to paraphrase it, it's going to be this way. With God, the probability is always one. Now, as your MVCA boosters, I hope you already answered that one. You need to share with us, why is God's probability always one? At the end of our class today, you'll be able to find the possible values of a random variable, illustrate a probability distribution, construct the probability mass function, and compute probabilities corresponding to a given random variable. And here's a sample venture activity. Let's do a coin toss. You get a one peso coin, and if it has the face, if you call it the head, and the other side is a tail, you toss the one peso coin three times and record in the activity sheet the results of three tosses. Do this again for the five trials. And in the last column, you need to count the number of heads in a set of toss. Now, for example, in our first toss, we have head. In the second, we have tail. In the third, we have head. So our number of heads will be two. Then you need to do that one for five times. Let's go to the next page. Now, let's first define some terms before we go further. The first is experiment. If you say experiment, it means that you are really doing the activity. For example, a while ago, we have the coin toss. So if you have really done the coin toss, that activity is called experiment. The outcome is the result of the experiment. So for example, when you toss a coin, the possible outcome could be head, tail, head, because you toss it three times. And the sample space is a set of all the outcomes. For you to know how many outcomes are there or to list all the outcomes, you could have the fundamental counting principle. It tells us that the total number of outcomes will be the product of all the ways. For example, you roll a, a die twice. So how many outcomes are there? In the first roll, there are six possible outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, and six. In the second roll, there are another six possible outcomes. So you multiply them. That's six times six. You will get 36 outcomes. Another, a coin is, to is tossed thrice. In the first toss, you will have two outcomes, head or tail. In the second toss, you will have another two outcomes, head or tail. In the third toss, you will have two other outcomes, head or tail. So the total number of outcomes will be two times two times two. That makes it eight. If you're going to list the possible outcomes, we can make a tree diagram. For example, we'll toss a coin thrice. Let's start writing a tree diagram. In the first toss, you have two outcomes, head or tail. In the second toss, you will have two possible outcomes. Let's branch it, head or tail. The other is head and tail. In the third toss, you will have two possible outcomes, head 
or tail. So we have head or tail. You have this in your grade eight probability class. Head or tail. Head or tail. Then head or tail. How are you going to write the outcomes? Here, you follow one branch. Head, head, head. That's the first possible outcome. The next, head, head, tail. The next one, head, tail, head. The next, head, tail, tail. Next, tail, head, head. The next one, tail, head, tail. The next, tail, tail, head. Then the last, tail, tail, tail. That's it. Now, ma'am, can I possibly write... Um, what else? Other, other branches? Um, it depends on these. If you arrange it this way, then your outcomes will also be in this way. As long as there are eight possible outcomes. Any questions? No other questions? I can go to the next example. So here, the first toss had tail, second toss still had tail, third toss still had tail. So you need to write all of the three. Let's go to the next problem. You toss a coin and you roll a die. For the tossing of a coin, we have head and tail. For the rolling of a die, the possible outcomes are one, two, three, four, five, six. You also write the same for the tail. So our possible outcomes are head one, head two, head three, head four, head five, head six, tail one, tail two, tail three, tail four, tail five, tail six. Questions? No questions? Let's go to the next problem. A spinner is labeled with three colors, red, green, and blue. Marcus moved the spinner once and tossed a coin once. Construct a three diagram. So for the spinner, we have red, green, and blue. And for each of these color, you need to match it with the possible outcomes of a coin, a coin, coin toss. We have head, tail, head, tail, head, tail. So what will be our possible outcomes? Red, head, red, tail, green, head, green, tail, blue, head, and blue, tail. Any questions? Or give me a thumbs up if you have understood how to construct a tree diagram because you'll be doing one this time. Okay. I assume that's an okay. Now let's go. Wait first. Ah, uh, no. Okay, now. We have the possible values of a random variable. If we say possible values of a random variable, these are the possible values obtained from functions that assign a real number to each point in the sample space. Now, the possible values of a random variable will depend on what is being asked. If you're asking for the number of heads or if you're asking for the number of tails, for example. Let's have the first problem. Two games. Oh, no, that's not the first one. Tossing three coins. 
three coils are tossed. Let x be the random variable representing the number of heads that occur. Find the values of the random variable x and complete the table below. So again, before we can do that, I suggest you draw your tree diagram. So head, tail, head, tail, head, tail, yes. Head, tail, wait first. Head, tail, head, tail, head, tail. So with that, we need to write the possible outcomes in our table. The first outcome, head, head, head. Head, head, tail. Head, tail, head. Head, tail, tail. Tail, we are now here. Tail, head, head, tail, head, tail, 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 head, tail, tail, tail. Now, the next one is we need to count random variable X. Based on the problem, X stands for the number of heads. So you simply count how many heads are there. Head, head, head. There are three. Head, head, tail, two. Then you go on, two, one. Tail, head, head, two. Tail, head, tail, one, one, and zero. So what are the possible values of your random variable y? It can be zero, one, two, and Three. Any questions? No questions? I can go to the next one. Now, let's go to the next problem. Okay. A team played two basketball games. Let X be the random variable representing the number of wins that the team had and find the values of random variable y. Complete the table below. In the chat box, share with me, what are our, sorry, what are our possible outcomes? Ready? Okay, in the chat box, share with me, or let me first ask, how many possible outcomes are there? How many possible outcomes? There are two games. How many possible outcomes? Any answers? In the first game, what are the possible options? Win or lose. In the second game, what are the possible options? Win or lose. So how many possible outcomes are there? That's what happened. Wait first. How many? Four. Very good. That's two times two. So we have four. No worries about that. Now. In the chat box, can you share with me what are the possible outcomes? Start typing the four. What are the four possible outcomes? Okay. Let me start with the three diagram. Win or lose. In the second, win or lose. Win or lose. Carl and Erica shared their answers with us. 
The first is win, 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 lose, lose, win, and lose, lose. Very good. Next, let's count the number of wins. So we have two, one, one, zero. Next, you need to write the possible values of the random variable y. We have zero, one, two. Any questions? No questions? Let's go to the next subtopic. The next is about, it's a, sorry. Two games here. It's about the probability mass function. What is a PMF? A PMF is a function that assigns a probability. We say probability, we say what is the chance or um, what's the possibility that a discrete random variable will get that value. For a discrete random variable x, its probability mass function can be denoted as p of x is equal to x for all x in the range x. Now, how are we going to do that one? Here. For example, in the first one, we have the number of heads 0, 1, 2, 3. Let me go back to the previous the previous page, this one. This is the first thing that we are constructing, the random variable table. And now we are going to construct our PMF, the probability mass function. There are two ways. The first is in table and the other is in piecewise function. So how are you going to do that one? First is, our first column is for x here. Remember, you have your possible values for x. 0, 1, 2, and 3. Then, we have here the p of x. It means probability of x. Now, there are eight possible outcomes. So we say over eight. How many times did we see zero in here? We see it once. Therefore, the probability of getting a zero is one out of eight. Or in fraction, that's one over eight. How about for one? Let's count it. One, two, three. So the probability of getting a one is three out of eight. <coughs> Sorry, three out of eight or three eighths. Next, how about for two? You have one, two, three. So three over eight. How about for three? There, that's one over eight. Now, there are, sorry, there are characteristics of a probability. First is, the values are just between zero to one. And once you will add all of them, one, three, three, one, the answer is a whole number, which is one. Now we can also write this in piecewise function. We have P of F in piecewise. How are you going to write that? We have P of X is equal to, okay. You start first with your P of X. We have one eight if, when is it one eight? If X is equal to zero or three. What's the other possible value of P of X? We have three eights. Three eights if x is equal to one or two. The last part is constructing 
a histogram. Now, how are you going to construct a histogram for a while? A histogram looks like a bar graph. The only difference is it has no spaces. So the graphs would go next to each other. Now, how will you plot a histogram? Here. The X is for the value of your random variable, while the Y axis is for the P of X. If you check, your x can have zero. Okay, now in a bar graph, you place the number here, right? But for the histogram, you place the number in between. One, two, and three. Next, for our p of x, our possible values are one, eight, and the other is three, eight. Next, we draw a bar graph. For zero, the P of X is one over eight, there. For one, the P of X is three eighths. For two, the P of X is three eighths. For three, the P of X is one eighth. Then you shade them. This will be our histogram. Any questions? Ma'am, what are we going to do in the quiz? In the quiz, you need to list the possible outcomes, identify the random variable X, identify the possible values of X, then construct the PMF in table, construct the PMF in piecewise, and construct the histogram. Any questions? There's none. Let's go to the next example, okay? Let's go to the win or lose here. This one. I'll just clear here. Okay, now. Let's have the PMF, okay? First, let's have the PMF in table. So you have your Y first. If it's Y, then you write this Y. And P of Y. Let's have zero, one, and two. In the chat box, share with me, what is the probability of zero? What is the probability of zero? Any answers? What is the probability of zero? Very good. That is one four. There's only one, right? So one over four. How about of one? What is the probability of one? Okay, you have two fourths, or that is one half. Next, what is the probability of two? Very good, that's one fourth. So if you add all the numerators, that's one, two, three, four. That's four over four or one. Next, let's have our PMF in piecewise. We say P of Y is equal to one fourth if, what's the value of X? If X is equal to, 
zero or two. Very good. Next, P of Y is equal to one half or two fourths if X is equal to one. Very good. Now let's have our histogram. This is our Y. Okay, now this is at the Y axis. We say it's the Y random variable. And this is our P of Y. So we have 0, 1, 2. Here, we'll have 1 fourth and 1 half. So for 0, that's 1 fourth. For 1, that's 1 half. For 2, that's 1 fourth. Then shade all of them. Any questions? No questions? Let's go to the last example. Okay. In our last example, here's the medical problem. Uh, no, no, no. Wait first. Why can't I move it to the last page? Wait first. Oh, there's no last page. There. This is the last page. Let's have the movie magazine problem. If you'll see in the in the table, we have the number of copies and the probability that we'll be selling, the store will be selling that number of copies in a day. So for example, if you say they can sell three copies, they have a 14% chance or 0 0.14 probability. Now let's check first. What is the probability that three copies will be demanded in a day? How do we write that? That's going to be P of X exactly three. What's the answer? 0 0.14. 14. Next question. What is the probability that three or more copies? So we say three or more copies. See P of X greater or equal to three. Now, how do we solve for three or more? It's simple. You just add all the probabilities from three or more. So it's 0.14 plus 0.12 plus 0.10 plus 0.08 plus 0.07 plus 0.06 plus 0.04 plus 0.03. So we will have 0 0.64. How about at most five? If you say at most five, the highest is five. Any answers in the chat box? At most five. The highest is five. What's the answer for at most five? It means you will add from zero to five. So what will be the answer? At most five? Zero point seventy zero point seventy two. Very good. That's the answer. Next. X is greater than four. What's the probability of having X greater than four? So that means from more than four, right? So from five up. X greater than four.
x greater than 4? What's the answer? That will be very good, 0 0.38. And then the last one, P is greater than 2, but less than or equal to 7. Greater than 2, so we labo si 2, and less than or equal to 7, up to 7. So it means from 3 to 7. X is greater than 2, but less than or equal to seven? What's the answer? That's zero point, let us check. Point 14, point 26, point 36, point 44, point 51. Please edit my 0 0.51. In my example, it's only P of 2, this one, less than X, less than 7. If it's less than 7, you don't include this, so we'll only have 0 0.44. But if it includes 7, that's 0 0.51. Any questions? No questions? This will be the last part of your quiz for today. You need to take your quiz by 9, 9 to 10. Let's end this with a prayer. <laughs>